Weekly for the week of January the 12th. No Andrew, no Will, no anybody. But hey, we got the third string point guard of the podcast, Sam. That's messed up, man. You don't get offended by that, do you? No, I'm just as messed up. That's not nice. Like your your position at RR is basically the the um the owner of the morning coffee, which which um, which has gotten quite a cult following these days. Uh, you, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of people I on Twitter a, like that stuff. A lot of people like it. I get a lot of emails every day from stuff that I miss. Mm. A lot of people help me out with it. I appreciate. It. You probably get to read a lot of Raptors uh, angles from a lot of different sites on the on the interwebs. Uh, you, you have a particular favorite site that you that you look forward to linking. <laughs> so uh, I I like Kareen. I like Wolstat. But any blogs, like any blogs you particularly like? Old blogs, yeah. I, I really like Hoops Habit. They do a good job. They're one of the fan-sided guys. Raptors HQ does a pretty good job. Obviously, we're the best. So, mm-hmm. yeah. um, goes without saying. Goes without saying. Interesting fact about Sam is that he met his missus on eHarmony. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not? No shame in that, man. I mean, a lot of no, people no are doing shame, it now. Man. A lot of people I, are doing I, it. Hey yeah. man, I was all over that, and when I was single. But, yeah, but even, um, even when you're married, like you ever go to E Harmony to see like how far you'd get? Just to troll people. Yeah, yeah I do that on Tinder sometimes. Tinder, eh? but you get you, you don't use Tinder with your real Facebook account though. You probably got a separate one you made. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I only have a fake Facebook account that I use mm-hmm. to uh, manage the Raptors Republic page. Yeah, you used to have a Facebook account, then you then you kind of bid a bit of what to it, and uh, what, what was that all about? What 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 about Facebook turned you away from it? Just I don't like people tagging me and shit, man. Mm. Like, I I don't want to want that. I I'd like to if if I was able to not let anyone do that for me, I would have stayed there. But my sister or my sister in law, they would like take a picture of their kid, and they would tag me in it, even yeah. though I'm not in the picture. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I have four thousand emails and four thousand notifications, and I'm like, yeah, you know, kill me. So. Yeah, and it's even more well annoying when um when people tag you in stuff that doesn't even have people in it. Well, yeah, sometimes it's like a quote, a quote you totally don't agree with, but you're, <laughs> but you're tagged in it. Yeah. And then, um, uh, and it's not just that you got to deal with the notification. When somebody visits your profile, they see that quote, which is like totally racist or some shit. And then, yeah. you, then you got to be accountable for it. So yeah, the tagging feature. Is, you know, I'm sure there's a permission or something for it, but um, no, there's no permission for it. I'm sure there is somewhere deep down. There in is. There, isn't. there probably is though, man. Uh, maybe they, maybe they've done it since. I'm like a year Facebook free, so yeah. So, um, listener, if you're wondering where the analysis of basketball is, it's it's gonna be pretty <laughs> light on this podcast. <laughs> we're we're adjusting the content, given that we have Sam instead of uh, Andrew and Will and and all the other guys. So just just bear with us, or you could just turn it off, or you could just turn this podcast off and save yourself some time. The talk to those guys will be up on Thursday. So. They they don't they don't talk about basketball either. They just rip on Terrence Ross. So that's legitimate, I think. It's a fashionable thing to do to rip on Terrence Ross these days. So, so the latest thing on Terrence Ross is that he's on Instagram like challenging people to NBA 2K. Yeah, he's bored, man. I don't know. Yeah. He should be he should be challenging people to jump shot competition. I think. Mm. And uh, he exposed his gamer tag on Instagram, so I'm sure he has like a thousand or ten thousand friend requests on on Xbox One. So he's he's gonna be busy these days. Uh, he's a couple of days off, so he's gonna be up late. And um, let's talk some Raptors though. Let's uh, let's get to some Raptors. Um, some news came out a couple days ago, and he just sent me this link over WhatsApp that, hey, let's talk about Thaddeus Young, your boy Thaddeus Young. And this is like two-day-old news, and as soon as I heard it, I just posted it immediately to the site. So I don't know why you had this news two, day, two days ago, but we're hanging on to it. Yeah, it was because um, I took the weekend off. Okay, fair enough. There you go. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> okay, I thought this was going to go that, somewhere. Okay. That was actually one of the links a uh, guy named Gabriel hit me up about it. I totally missed that one. So uh, if, if you're not aware, uh, a couple of days ago on the on the ESPN uh, podcast, uh, the basketball podcast, uh, they were talking about what trades could be made in the NBA. Uh, and uh, Kevin Pelton from ESPN had uh, had something to say about that. And we'll just play a clip of Kevin Pelton uh, giving his opinion on on what needs to be done. Kevin Pelton, trade you think needs to happen? So I look at this from a slightly different perspective. Thaddeus Young spent all last year in Philadelphia on one of the worst teams in NBA history. 
He gets traded last summer from Philadelphia to Minnesota, and now the Timberwolves have the same record as the Sixers. We need to get this poor guy to a contender as soon as possible. <laughs> but it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough finding a fit for him. Uh, I thought Houston would have been a really good one if they hadn't picked up Josh Smith. Uh, could be a little bit of a stretch four for them. Now I don't think that works. So what I'm looking at is sending him to Toronto to, you know, maybe move Amir Johnson to center on a more regular basis, and you can play him and Patrick Patterson at the four, uh, and they can get him we'll give you up landry fields and tyler hansbro and some kind of a pick in return there you go man your boy thaddeus young i, I, I know you've been vying for him for a long long time long time and uh he has been available for quite some time now uh obviously he was available last year when he got shipped over to minnesota and now that minnesota is not doing much he's potentially on the trade block again and uh, uh the rationale behind uh behind acquiring him as as were kevin was that um he might move Amir Johnson over to the backup center and and make Thaddeus Young the kind of like the full time power forward. What are your what are your thoughts there? Um, so I don't know if I like Amir as like a full time center playing ahead of JV, but it, it wouldn't be ahead of JV. It would be in the backup role. Yeah, maybe he could definitely even play three for us as well. So I like that Young. Uh, you could you could throw out really really interesting lineups like uh like you just said you could have like Amir at five. You could have Fat that at four. James Johnson at three, DeMar, Kyle, that that would be kind of a fun lineup to watch running up and down. Not mm. a whole lot of offense, but a lot of athleticism. They could uh, make things interesting. And, I mean, you're giving up nothing, right? Landry, Tyler, and a pick? Well, it depends on what kind of pick. And uh, I don't know if Tyler Hansborough is nothing. I think he's been productive in whatever stints he's had. Uh, we talked about trading Tyler Hansborough in the last podcast. The thing is that if you – if you give him up, you got to get somebody better at the position. That so, young. So, th- that young would be that. <laughs> that, that young. Right. That, that young would be that guy. So this is one one trade that would actually make sense from the Raptors' perspective, at least that you would get uh, you would get a better player, and maybe Minnesota uh, could do with a cap relief for uh, and take care of Landry Field and get him a second round pick or something. So yeah, I'm on board with this. I, I've liked that young for quite some time, and. Uh, He's one of those guys that's always been on the losing teams, uh, or or most of his career has been on a losing team. So it'd be, it'd be good to see how he reacts in a in a winning situation. Did you? That's one of those things that makes me nervous. So it's uh, like Sharif Abdul Rahim back mm-hmm. in the day. Marie used to play for Memphis and um, Vancouver. He was a 2010 guy. He he did everything, but he just he had that look of like a loser on him. He always mm-hmm. was, you know, his shoulders were always a little bit low. He was always maybe not, just not maybe crisp. maybe he just had bad bad posture. Who knows? Maybe could be that. Uh, did you watch the Celtics game? I unfortunately did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I shudder to think what would have happened if he would have lost that game because f- losing four enough, four in a row was bad enough, and the defense has been has been quite poor. Like I, I got some stats here. Like over the last five, our, our defense is twenty um, seventh in the league. Twenty seventh. Yeah. That's bad, man. What's the uh, offense? Uh, the offense is like twenty uh, third, I believe it is, over the That's last bad five. Too, man. It's bad too. Yeah, overall, it's still number two. We just fell behind Dallas uh, by a, by a point and a half. But uh, over the last five games, the offense and defense has been terrible, and um, the games really haven't been haven't been that close, uh, other than the Charlotte one, which which Kemba Walker took over late. This this Celtics game in, in my post game, I said we shouldn't read too much into it because the Celtics were in a tough situation, uh, shorthanded, back to back, game in overtime the night before on the road as well. So, to me, the Celtics win was basically you, you better win that man, or, or else shit yeah. will hit the fan. So the next game against Detroit, uh, that's the one that uh, that looks uh, that looks really juicy right now because Detroit is like eight and one. Uh, after trading Josh Smith, like uh, what, what's gotten into them, man? Is, is it just they, like was Josh cut, Smith such a cancer? Josh Smith, they didn't trade him. They mm. let him walk they away. Cut, they cut him. Yeah, they yeah. paid him twenty-seven million dollars to walk mm. away or something ridiculous. He's just like, take the money, get the f out. Just leave. Yeah. Just leave us alone. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're interesting, Detroit. You, you got you have Drummond, you have Monroe, you have Jennings, you have you have Van Gundy. You got you got a lot of nice little players on that team. Mm. Jalen predicted they'd make the. Jalen Rose, I said Jalen like I know the guy. Mm. Um, Jalen Rose predicted that you know they'd be an eight seed this year. And, you know I don't know how much inside info he had, but mm. it looks like he's gonna make make good on that. They're gonna be tough, man. They're gonna be tough. Like Monroe and Drummond in the low post. Uh, Valanciunas played really really well against Boston. I I felt. Yeah, we'll talk about the, the whole big small lineup in the next segment, man. But talking about Detroit, uh, we did beat them once this season, and that's when James Johnson threw the um, um, cock joint bangum dr- uh, dunk on uh, on Drummond. Yeah. Oh well, that that was with Josh Smith in the lineup. 
Yeah, Joe, that was your offense. So that was the pre-trade. It's it's kind of like with the Raptors and uh, the Rudy Gay trade. Uh, it's pre like Rudy it's like yeah. it's like pre uh, pre Josh post Josh uh, Pistons. The other game of the week was uh, was a Charlotte one man. That was uh, that was depressing. Kemba's a new Raptor killer man. He's the new Jamal Crawford. And, and it kind of brought to light uh, like how bad our perimeter defense really has been. And even Kyle Lowry, who's uh, like who's been a godsend for us this year, no no question about it. And uh, without him, we probably have like half the wins we have. But his defense has been quite poor in in one v one situations all season long. Yeah, it has been. I I think a lot of that is we might be we might be assuming a lot based off of his recent performance without Demar in the lineup. He's been carrying a lot more of the pressure and a lot more of the burden. So he's he looks tired, man. He looks like I, you know I I almost wish he wouldn't go to the All Star game so he could have like five days off. You know it, it it's tough it's tough to say he's not doing his job because. So many other people aren't doing their jobs. We're missing Demar, which is a really big deal. And it's not that he's a great defensive player; he's a good defensive player. But you know, when he stops, when he stops the ball and he goes to the line nine, ten times a game, you know that that helps your defense because mm-hmm. you're you're not running back on on your on your heels in transition mm-hmm. nine, ten times. Well, you know, four or five times a game. And I remember that the whole "We the Fourth" slogan that uh, that Devlin was trumpeting uh, earlier in the year. Uh, yeah. Over the last six games, uh, the Raptors' offense is 21st in the fourth quarter and 22nd uh, in terms of defense. So 21st on offense, 22nd on defense in the fourth quarter over the last five games. So there's a significant drop uh, with DeMar DeRozan out of the lineup. I think they kind of they kind of sustained well without him uh, for the first little bit, but now that the games have kind of kind of crunched up and uh, the the opposition has kind of caught on, they're struggling to execute in the fourth quarter. And you see a lot, a lot of jumpers, man. Not like Euro healthy ball. jumpers, just, just Euroball, exactly. And um, just some more stats because um, uh, we're going to fill the airtime with some stats. Because I'm weak on stats. Do, do you have any stats to offer in this podcast? I, I've got nothing. So I, I can't. Yeah, I just said it was messed up. I, I didn't disagree. The Raptors are third in the league in pull-up attempts. So that's basically take a couple of dribbles, pull up from long range, Third in the league um, in in, uh, in pull up shots, which is not always a great shot, but since you have Kyle Lowry and Lou Williams uh, on the on, on the roster, you I guess you, that's a byproduct of that. Also, Grevis Vasquez. On the flip side, they're 29th in the league in catch and shoot attempts. Remember the good old catch and shoot that we used to run for Demar Derozan, come off four screens, catch the ball, shoot it. Like that is entirely missing from our offense since he's gone out. And if anybody thought that Terrence Ross would come and replicate that action, it hasn't happened. And the Raptors don't really have anybody other than other than Demar who can who can do any kind of catch and shoot play. And uh, the numbers do reflect that. And that that's something from our offense that's been missing. And I think that's what's hurting the Raptors right now. They're they're very one dimensional in terms of how they're going to get their points when it really matters. Well, it's funny you say catch and shoot because I I felt that was the only part of Ross's game uh, last night that was any good. He on he was like two for two on catch and shoot situations. He he was zero for five on you know giving the ball, let him take a couple of dribbles and let him make something about it. But we should be a lot better in in, in that scenario, especially considering you have a guy like you have a guy like uh, Lowry who's who's got that wicked step back jumper, but he he has the ability to clear some space for himself. Mm. Uh, and Vasquez, they can get into their paint, draw the second guy, you know, kick it out for an j- open jumper. And mm. we saw a little bit of that last night, but uh, just not enough. I mean, it's there's not enough plays being called. There's not enough pick and rolls. Yeah, It's all, you know, let's give the ball to Lowry and, you know, a flavor of that, basically. Yeah. So. I, I guess last night, the big difference against the Celtics we're talking about here is that, is that the Raptors made a huge effort to get Jonas Valanciunas the ball. Uh, yep. They usually give him a couple of possessions to start the game, and then they forget about him. But last night, they, they, they made a good effort of getting him the ball, not just in the block, but in give-and-go situations. And I posted a couple of vines in my post-game report as well. And the lineup that that people seem to like, and I, I certainly liked, was one of uh, Valanciunas, uh, Patterson, and... Um, uh, and James Johnson, I, I thought that was a front court lineup that added both rebounding, defense, enough offense in Patterson and JV that it could be sustainable. Certainly more than having a hobbled Amir Johnson out there or Tyler Hansborough, who basically really is is void on offense. Uh, I thought that was an interesting lineup that Casey hasn't played much and something he could maybe use going forward. I totally agree. I think um, I, th- I think the Raptors did a good job of getting Valanciunas the ball yesterday. But if you notice, he was fighting really hard to get great position all night. He was right there on a lot of offensive tips, some putbacks. He did really, really well, I felt. It was a totally it was a totally unexpected look for me, especially considering he picked up that second foul 
in the first quarter. That could have totally derailed his night, but he didn't let that happen. He was he was really instrumental in the second half. Yeah, I think once a player knows that he can play through mistakes, and he does make a lot of mistakes, like once you get that get that feeling that, hey, even though I, I might screw up on offense or miss a gimme, I'm not going to get benched, you start yeah. to become a little more loose on the on, on the court, and you know you're not going to get benched, so you, you start taking more chances, and when you take more chances, good things usually happen because you're more aggressive. Uh, so I, I think last night he saw that he wasn't going to get pulled because of a small mistake, which which often happens to him, and uh, and you saw that he could be a productive member on both sides of the court, on, on the floor. And we saw what happened with Ross. He got pulled. Uh, you know, he only played 20, 21 minutes mm-hmm. last night in a game that was tailor made for him, right? Yep. Athletic wings that the Celtics have. He had a lot of opportunity to catch and shoot. That is true. Why don't we take a break and come back and talk about some Matt Devlin? Welcome back to part two of Raptors Weekly. Joined by Sam today, the king of the morning coffee, brewing the morning coffee every morning. How long does that post take, by the way? Uh, it takes me it takes me about an hour. Hour. That's a I gotta lot. read. I gotta mm. read a lot, man. Mm. I think the key to morning coffee is what I don't link to. What you don't link to? Oh, it must be a shower of shit it. if you don't if you don't link to. Something. I read it so you guys don't have to. It's, oh, really? It's, it's a thing of love. What 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 is one blog that you read and you just shake your head? I can't. Just do it. Just tell me. No, man. No, no. I'm not. <laughs> you gotta be one blog. Come on. They work hard. People work hard, man. Give it's us a, a hint. Give us a hint. Yeah, you guys know. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll leave it at that. So let's talk about Matt Devlin, and we'll talk about the rest of the schedule later in the uh, later in the pod. But let's talk about Matt Devlin right now. Uh, he's been yelling NBA ballot every time Kyle Lowry hits a hits even like a mid range jumper. What do you how how do you feel about that? It's horrible. It cheapens it's cheapening Lowry's like campaign this year, don't you think? Like I I don't know. Like p- if people want to vote for the guy, they'll vote for the guy, right? Mm. Yeah. Just yelling it every time he does makes a good play. Yeah. It's so bad that Ben Golliver wrote a piece about it in Sports Illustrated yesterday, the day before. I don't remember when it was. Yeah, what did he say? No, no, it's like every time Lowry did something. <laughs> he yelled the hashtag NBA foul. <laughs> he, he did it like 12 – he, he counted. He, it was like 12 times throughout the game. That's ridiculous, right? It's cringeworthy, man. It's cringeworthy. It's horrible. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a standard, standard kind of mls move, and I yeah. probably shouldn't have said that. You might want to beep this out, but <laughs> – no, 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 nothing to beep out here because uh, I like the fact that the the prime minister came out and said hashtag yeah, NBA ballot, cool. whatever. It's nice, good PR for the rappers, good exposure. That's how I look at it. I don't, I don't look at it like we're desperate to get Kyle Lowry in, but it, it, it's good. It's the He's rappers. People are He's talking going. about the rappers. That's great. Yeah. But when Devlin does that, the people who are watching the game are watching it because they're fans. They're gonna already do that, man. It's the it's the it's the non fans. It's the people who are on the fence that are kind of like in bars, like you know, there's a Leaf game on and they don't care about the rappers. It's those guys you want to get voting uh, yeah. to to get this gap narrowed. Not like don't yell in my ear. They got NBA ballot to Kyle Lowry. It's, it's it's annoying and it's uh it makes us look desperate, man. Huge. I, I I'd almost prefer like a a watermark hashtag on the screen <laughs> for the entire game, right? Like underneath the scoreboard. It's it, it it's just weird hearing like a 55 year old dude say. Hashtag NBA mm-hmm. ballot, man. I think I think that might be what bothers me the most. Yeah. And um, like, what do you think uh, of his uh, of his calls of uh, of yelling out cities after uh, after like made shots? Because that's something Chuck Swirsky used to do, and it used to look good on Chuck Swirsky. He had that voice, he had that uh, fanatical head, and his voice was crazy too. So it it, it suited him, right? Uh, I'm downtown Sarnia, you know, all that shit. And but when Devlin does it, and again, it looks forced. It's it's Bush League, man. It's Bush League. Yeah. And, and the sad part is that Devlin is actually a very, very good television yeah. announcer. Like when he's on Turner. I prefer him to Swirsky, 100%. When he's on Turner, he's extremely competent. Like his, I think his voice changes, his demeanor, it just, he just morphs into a totally different person. And he's very enjoyable to listen to. He's, I'd say he's on par with guys like in terms of excitement and, and play-by-play like Mike Breen and all those guys. He's just as good. It's just that when he's with the Raptors, he assumes his persona. Maybe he's been hanging around Leo Raptors too long, man. Maybe it's uh, it's Rod Black. Maybe, maybe he's, he's those guys are wearing him down. But, but maybe he just steps up when the game's more important, right? Yeah. Just, there's those players. Could be, could be, but 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 Devlin, if if you're listening, and I and I know you're not, <laughs> <laughs> just be yourself, man. Just be yourself. You're good the way you are. You don't got to be anybody else. Stop yelling out cities. That's Chuck's thing. Get your own, man. Get your own stuff. 
All right. Now that we talked about Devlin, uh, we should talk about something else. What's on your mind, Sam? Tell me what's on your mind. I won like a five or six game winning streak. You won a five or six game winning streak. Well, on that note, we should probably check out the schedule and see what lies ahead. And um, as I pull up the schedule on the internet, so it's a bit slow here. Why don't you Why don't you fill this airtime with some with some knowledge while I look up the schedule? Um, I got nothing. All right. Okay. So good thing I got the schedule now. So we've got Detroit on Monday at home. Yeah. Philadelphia, that should be a win. Then you yep. got Atlanta on Friday, a big game, and yep. uh, and then you got New Orleans to round off the week. So Detroit, we 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 kind of talked about it's it's going to be a bit of a tough game with, with with the with the cancer that is Josh Smith out of the lineup, um, and uh, they're getting some really good play from uh, from Monroe and Drummond now, and Brandon Jennings has become a little more responsible. His assists are up, so so he, he they're finding a good good balance there. Philadelphia, I would assume is a is is a win because they get rolled by forty every night. Although they did break Brooklyn the other night. Brooklyn's always on the fence, and they beat the Pacers. Yeah, and the Pacers have nobody on their team. Though. Yeah, so, so the Seventy Sixers have won two games over the last week, and and now stand at seven and twenty nine. So maybe they're not gonna beat the uh, nine win uh, uh, nine win record. So the Raptors, I guess, have to watch out for them just a little bit. Tony Roten's been uh, having a pretty good season. He's basically the only guy. MCW. Uh, MCW, MCW. Yeah, MCW. I have both sorry. of them in fantasy. Roten is infuriating player to own in fantasy. He'll give you like nineteen points. Mm-hmm. seven assists, like three threes, a steal, a block, and then like nine turnovers mm-hmm. in a game. Yeah, the nine turnovers kill everything, yeah? Kills it. And then you got Atlanta. Atlanta's a big game on Friday, man. So the Hawks, um, I picked them to do really well this season, and uh, uh, just because I'm a believer in uh, uh, in Al Horford, and I think Jeff Teague's a fantastic point guard, and they have been red hot, the best team in the East right now. They went out West. And uh, and took care of business, man. They they weren't screwing around out west. Uh, they beat the Blazers uh, in uh, in Portland, which the Raptors came close to but didn't accomplish. They also beat uh, the uh, the Clippers, which uh, you know which the Raptors did as well. And uh, they're currently on a six, seven, eight game winning streak, man. Eight game winning streak, which includes wins over Washington, Memphis, Clippers, Portland. I mentioned Cleveland. Uh, so some some good wins here, man. And uh, they're going to be red hot. They're going to face Philadelphia and Boston before they face the Raptors. So very well, they could be winners of 10 straight by the time they get to uh, get to Toronto. Thoughts on the Hawks, man. Thoughts on the Hawks. They have a damn pretty offense. They move the ball around better than, better than San Antonio does. They have such a nice mix of players. As much as I hate Al Horford. What, why, why do you hate Al Horford? I, I can't forgive him for raping TJ Ford. That's one of those things that I can't get over. He ruined our team, right? They're, they're a great fourth quarter team, man. Um, because Kyle Korver, we talked about, is a guy that um, even though you know exactly what he's going to do, that he's going to hit the three, and all the Hawks offense is doing is setting him up for that three, you can be prepared for it, but you just can't stop it, man. Yeah. You can't. It's because they move the ball around so beautifully. Teague, also another one of those all-star guys, man. They, they have some guys who just know how to set screens, man. Yeah. Millsap, Horford. Like Millsap off- for $8 million, too. They got him for nothing. That's nothing, yeah. Uh, like, and take off the bench. Like, all these guys, they know how to good, set good screens. They're very well coached. And uh, w- w- when the screens aren't working, when they need to go one-on-one, they got Jeff Teague, who's been overpowering point guards, and they got Al Horford in the post. So they got weapons everywhere. They're getting great production off the bench as well. Schroeder is playing better for them. Cephalosha is bringing the D off the bench. So they're a well-rounded team who's coming together. And barring injury... At this point, like they're not gonna fall, I don't think, below the the third seed in the East. No, no, there's no way. They're probably favored to get out of the East right now. You know, you know, Brian Colangelo is putting in a bit to buy them, right? Where is Brian Colangelo getting all this money from? Dude, he's 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 a legacy man. His his daddy owned owned the son, sold him for like half a billion. So it's so it's really it's 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 a Colangelo uh, father and son buying, and not not Brian Colangelo really. I, that I don't know. Anyways, he's he's got access to money. Let's, mm. Let's put it that way. You know, he he's he's the king of selling snake oil, right? So, how do you think the Raptors are gonna do against the Hawks here? They're gonna lose. They're gonna lose at home. Well, I mean, they might get DeRozan back by then. Yeah, why? Right? He's what? He he's gonna miss a month and a half by the time he gets back. Mm. It's, it's not DeRozan from you know December eighth. It's DeRozan who has been off for a month and a half, sending him the tunnel. Fair point. You no, know, with anxiety. The the reality is, is you know how are we going to stop that Hawks offense? 
Well, certainly the Raptors haven't shown much in terms of defense, which is surprising given given that their coach is always called defensive minded. But we'll see, man. Uh, like uh, all you can do against the Hawks is basically check Kyle Korver, and to check Kyle Korver, you just can't. Um, you, you, like it's it's got to be a team effort, right? Because the Raptors' defense right now is not like from a team perspective, they're horrible. They're not communicating well. All they do is scramble, but. Against the Hawks, you can't necessarily scramble. You have to anticipate. So you got to predict almost where Corver is going to go, like what their what their action is going to be, and and re, and not react to it, but be a step ahead. And the Raptors, I just right now, I just don't see them being able to do that. Um, what they're probably going to do the is pick and roll. You have to defend that pick and roll. They run that really nicely. Yeah, that's how it's a lot of their. Uh, that's how it's a lot of their. You know, pick roll, kick, 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 Corver for three in the corner. And, and the thing is that since the Raptors themselves don't run any pick and roll whatsoever. And I'm guessing that's the case in practice as well. They probably don't have much of an idea on how to defend it because you only get better with what you do in practice. And yep. if, if in practice they're not running pick and roll, well, guess what? You're not going to be able to defend it that well when it's when other teams are using it in the game. So, yeah, pick and roll is a problem, man. Like we got we got to run more of that. Yeah. Big problem. Well, let's take a break, man. And after the break, we'll we'll talk about uh, New Orleans and, and and what they have to offer and maybe some uh, some other um, Twitter, Instagram type stuff. Welcome back to Raptors Weekly. So we're going to quickly talk about the New Orleans game before moving on to more important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans uh, coming into town on Sunday, January 18th. is a 3.30 start. Uh, by the way, Sam, I, I'd asked you to hook me up with some tickets courtside. Is, uh, how, how's that coming along? It, I, I, no, one's, no one's getting back to me. Mm. Could you try a little harder? I'll do my best. By the way, listener, if you, uh, if you have a couple of courtside tickets to spare or, or good seats in general, uh, ping us, raptorsrepublic at gmail.com. And, and I'll take them off you. All right. So uh, uh, New Orleans, how much of New Orleans have you watched? And don't say nothing. Just lie to me and say you watch something. I've watched a couple of their games. I have Anthony Davis in one of my fantasy leagues. What, what do you like about New Orleans? Uh, Anthony Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's um, they're an interesting team, man. Like Drew Holiday, uh, they got a lot of the same kind of players. Mm-hmm. So you have Drew Holiday, you have Tyreek. You know, they got a bad coach. I'm not a fan of Monty at all. Well, he's, he's one of the best dress coaches, though. Well, yeah, 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 he looks like. But mm-hmm. um, a lot of these teams are just generally, you're, you're wasting these these phenomenal talents mm. their first few years, right? They, they need to do something, get some talent around mm. Anthony Davis quick. The guy is, he is devastating. He does everything on the court. Kind of getting bored of this. Uh, let's talk about the LeBron, uh, the deal Cleveland made. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they get J.R. Smith, who's been getting some run now, uh, even though they lost uh, uh, in uh, in Golden State a couple of nights ago. I saw that game and it looked horrible. Even though you, you say that like they should have beat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just... What did you make of the trade? Like, is J.R. Smith and um, Shumpert uh, that much of an improvement over Dion Waiters? Well, I think a lot of that has to do with Dion Waiters. No one likes him on that team. Mm. So th- there was a documented history between him and Kyrie. He thought he was on the same level of Kyrie, obviously. He's not. Mm-hmm. He's a bit of a head case. Yeah, he's got talent, but, you know, everyone in the NBA has talent. So yeah. you get rid of a, a cancer in the locker room. You bring in a couple other guys, one of whom could also be a cancer in the locker room. Mm. Um, and then you go and trade, what was it, two first-round picks for Mozgov? Yeah, I, I like Mozgov. I, I think he's a decent— uh... He's good. I do think Kofus is, is is a better interior defender, but Mozgov's a decent guy. But I don't know if he's worth two first round picks. It, it, it just seems like a sound, like a sign of desperation uh, by Cleveland to kind of do that because they're really trying to win now. Uh, they got this little window in this two year where LeBron is still under contract. They're pushing for it. Like to me, I, I thought Shumpert was the more valuable player between J.R. Smith and and, uh, and Shump. Yeah, I, I I don't know what to make of it. I like the Moskov move. It, they got Moskov in, but I think they gave up too much. They're sacrificing future. Okay, fine, I get that. But the um, Dion Waiters for J.R. Smith, I, I don't get that one. And from OKC's perspective, why are they acquiring Dion Waiters when they already have uh, Jackson? You know, the, their problem is they need they need scorers, right? And Dion Waiters is not a scorer, man. He's a low efficiency player. Yeah, but I mean, he he can get you seventeen a game. Mm-hmm. He's been getting he's been getting Cleveland seventeen a game, right? and plus you put him at the end of your bench. What's, what's the risk? Mm-hmm. He's he's still on his rookie contract. Um, you own his board rights in case he turns it around. It's interesting what's happening in Cleveland. They're, 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 they're this is exactly what they did the mm-hmm. first time around with LeBron. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. They keep bringing in these horrible players. At least they have Kyrie and, and Kevin Love to line up mm. with them. Yeah. Uh, he didn't even have that last time, right? I would love to see LeBron like leave at the end of the oh. season. And uh, Cleveland would be left with like Kevin Love's expiring. Then he would leave. And then they would have traded their entire future <laughs> for nothing. For nothing. That, that, would, be that would be awesome. Plus that, we get another plus we get another Morgan Freeman letter, right? Narrated letter. <laughs> I listen to that once a week just just for oh, yeah. just for jokes. Man. I mm-hmm. love that. Uh, what Sam's referring to is a, is a is an old podcast we did where we played uh, <laughs> um, um, LeBron's letter read in Morgan Freeman's voice. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on the internet. Just look it up. Uh, but the, the other trade, man, that's uh, that's being reported is uh, the Boston Celtics, uh, Grizzlies, and Pelicans. Uh, and the trade would go something like this. Tell me, Sam. Basically, Memphis gets Green, and uh, the the Celtics get Tayshawn Prince's expiring. Who gets Austin Rivers? Is the question. <laughs> well, actually, Austin Rivers ends up in ends up in the Clippers. He's mm-hmm. got to keep him in the league somehow. This this is a guy. This is a guy. People were killing themselves to draft a few years ago, if you remember. And we went ten, and people are like, "Oh, that was too low." Now he now, now the way he's going to stay in the league is if his dad trades for him and gives him, you know, like end of a bench kind of contract. Yeah, I think people saw Steph Curry and said, you know what? Maybe he'll be another one of those type players, and it hasn't panned out yet. And maybe he's a late bloomer, man, kind of like uh, Gerald Green was. Um, yeah, that's fair. You know, like that's some fair. guys just take longer to find their place in the NBA, and uh, he could shoot the ball in college. And yeah, uh, sure. that's one thing that should translate into the NBA, at least, at least as a spot-up shooter. So maybe Hansel it's just a, it's just a matter of time. Hansel was a beast in college. I, th- I think he was like, like one of the best players in the country in the college. Yeah, he was. So uh, we didn't talk about the Pelicans game that much. Uh, just give me a prediction on this one. Raptors by four. Raptors by four. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead with my predictions. I'm going to be like a, a loss to the Hawks, uh, a yeah. win in Detroit, a uh, win against Detroit, win against uh, Philadelphia, yeah. a loss to the Hawks, and then I'm going to say a win against the Pelicans. So the Raptors get back on track three and one. Three and one. I, yeah. I could go with that. Yeah. All right. Let's go with that then. Uh, so tell us more about eHarmony, though. E-harmony. Um, the key is to lie on your profile and to and to put someone else's picture up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, we'll mercifully end this podcast and uh, and, and and come back next week with uh, with with, with regular with real panels. basketball people. And yeah. we'll talk about some basketball and uh, and other stuff. So uh, until then, we're sorry. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>